All right, we're going to get started. Everyone, welcome to our quick 30 minute webinar. My name is Phil Corbin, marketing director here at Verify. I am here today with Dan Schmidt and Victor Verba, both system engineers. In today's webinar, we're going to cover a popular feature with those users that have Contact Center or UCCX. It's our fully customizable real time UCCX wallboards. Just a reminder, we're going to focus on the CCX wallboards today, and we'll have another full webinar devoted to CCX reporting very soon. Today, we'll focus on the wallboarding. We're going to start off with a quick overview of Verify and what we do. Then also, what is UCCX, what are wallboards, and how by using them, your organization can gain visibility into your contact center. We'll jump into a live demo. Vic's going to take us through uh, running CCX reporting and setting up a wallboard and widgets. We'll pause for a quick Q and A, get some of your questions answered. Uh, pretty important during the demo. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q and A panel. It's at the bottom right of the screen. Uh, make sure to notify the hosts and panelists. Again, if you have any questions while we're going through the demo, please ask them in the Q and A panel in the WebEx, and we'll get those answered. Again, we'll, we'll pause at the end of the demo for a Q&A and answer those live as well. After Q&A, we'll reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to, to the end to see what you might have won. All right. Quick overview of Verify. So we are the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR reporting and analytics. Customizable dashboards, wallboards, widgets, also UCCX reporting, remote phone control, change management. But today we're going to be covering UCCX wallboards. If you have any other questions on any of our other features, we can most definitely take them offline and get those answered. So let's get into it. So, what is Contact Center, UCCX, and what are wallboards? So, with Call Manager, and contact center or CCC or UCCX, there are some key differences. So in contact center, uh, reporting is built and designed on what's going on in that contact center. So how many calls are coming into your queue? How many agents are handle, handling those calls? Also, how many agents, uh, how, how are they performing? Are they out to lunch? What are the state durations? So on and so forth. This is all contact center information. CDR, CUCM call manager reporting is based on all of the call data. So that could be things like cradle to the grave. Example, maybe we had a complaint from a customer of a call that kind of bounced around and then got disconnected. Things uh, that we're able to show from the call manager side of things are really going to be the whole flow of calls, things that take place within the contact center as well as outside of the contact center. So from a call manager perspective, you kind of get the big picture of how a call flowed. From the contact center perspective, you get more information as it pertains to the contact center, how a call is handled specifically by a queue or an agent. So I kind of want to set the stage here. There's a little bit of difference in what we're going to go ahead and see. So within the UCCX reporting, uh, you can concurrently view and monitor both agents and CSQs or contact, contact service queues. So with the CCX wallboard, uh, you get a web-based tool that brings you all of your CCX data uh, and specifically agent statistical info in real time. And we'll show you that in a second. Uh, you can easily put it up on large screens within a contact center. Uh, wallboards are fully user-specific, customizable down to their specific widgets within the wallboard. We'll show you that again in a second here. You can drag, drag and drop those widgets, set thresholds with colors as visual alerts. Um, admin supervisors, agents get access to self-serve web-based reporting. You can monitor agents or entire CSQs right there within a single pane of glass. You can even bring in the CDR and CUCM widgets within your wallboard and mix those with CCX widgets as well. Um, you get your user-based data restrictions, so who can see what, and we also added a new, uh, a cool feature that lets you send out a permalink or a read-only version of your wallboard to anybody you'd like. Uh, you can even set a password to that permalink wallboard. So <laughs> enough with the PowerPoint. Let's jump right into the live demo. We have Victor here who's going to walk us through CCX wallboards. 
here live. Bill, if you want to go ahead and pass that ball. Yep. Bring it now. All right. Go. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and thank you, Phil. Uh, my name is Victor Verba. I'm uh, what's kind of referred to over here as, as Verify as one of our uh, many CDR ninjas. Um, and today I'm going to walk through a little bit of uh, building a UCCX wallboard, building some general widgets that are going to show um, things like agent states, uh, current states of queues, number of calls waiting, oldest calls in queue, and things of that nature. One of the nice things about uh, Verify is that we are a very flexible application. Um, as Phil had mentioned, both from the CDR perspective and being able to generate things like cradle to grave, but as well as being able to show things like contact center uh, metrics, agent metrics, how long somebody's in current states and things like that. But the other nice thing about Verify is our dashboards and widgets are not limited to either or. In other words, I don't have to build a dashboard on just my agent stats or just build a dashboard on my uh, queue stats. I can actually mix and match my widgets on a single dashboard. So popping into this general dashboard right here, what we're looking at are some general queue information, some general agent information. But what you'll notice down here is I also have some CDR-based information. The nice thing about that is the flexibility to be able to do that. A lot of contact center managers have folks that are not just in the contact center. They also work things that are outside of the contact center. So being able to have both your contact center metrics um, as well as general metrics of calls taking place or with folks that are not in your contact center is an important piece of information because it's going to be able to give you the full big picture um, and not just specifically what's happening within your contact center. One of the other nice things about uh, the Verify, again, is I talked a little bit about flexibility. Each one of these is a dashboard. So what I'm looking at here is just a general dashboard based off my contact center um, as well as my uh, CDR metrics. Each one of these is very caterable, very customizable as far as sizing, rearranging, moving around. Um, but the other nice thing about the dashboard is it's shareable. Um, so what I mean by that is let's say, for example, I've got a great dashboard set up over here um, and I need to be able to post this on a screen. Well, I don't want to have to log into that screen. I don't want to have to give somebody else access so they have to log into that screen as well. Verify offers something what's called permalinking. Permalinking is just the ability to save a favorite. This is a static link. It is not changing. Um, if I change my wallboards, widgets, add additional widgets to this existing wallboard, this link is going to go ahead and remain the same. So it's a nice way to be able to share general information with the call center, um, as well as being able to share general information with just other managers. Um, sometimes you have managers that just want to be able to see information when they want to be able to see it. So being able to provide them a, a permalink that they could save as a favorite, come back to at any given time, um, is a great way to be able to share information. A lot of times people aren't wanting to dig through email or get regular reports. So being able to just come in and see some historical value based on a department um, or see uh, you know, how many calls are in the queue today or how many stat agents do I have available is just a great way to be able to share information and share it very quickly. One of the other nice things about the permalink is this is very sizable. Um, so what I mean by that is this looks great on my screen right now, but how does this resonate to a large screen? What if I've got a huge display in my call center and I've got a very large room? So the nice thing about that is each one of these is scalable. So I can scale my font size down to match my room size. Um, and then coming in our near future is you're going to have the ability to scale individual widgets. So not just the entire dashboard. Um, but also individual widgets to be able to say, hey, you know what, I need this one to be a little bit more prominent than this one. So there's a lot of flexibility within Verify to be able to provide this information, but also scale that information to the end users. So what I'm looking at here is just a general, a general dashboard. Um, each one of these widgets was created by me um, to be able to represent certain information that I need to be able to see. You can have as many dashboards as you like. There is no limitation to how many dashboards you can have. Dashboards can be based off of CDR information. They could be based off of CCX information. Or as I had shown here, they could be based off of a combination of both CDR and UCCX information. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and walk and talk a little bit about the ease of Verify. So what I'm looking at here is a dashboard. I'm going to walk through how to go ahead and create a simple dashboard with some simple metrics. I'm going to show you how to copy and rearrange some of those widgets. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new dashboard, and I'll just call this guy sample here. 
next thing I'm going to do is this is going to be a shareable dashboard, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my part, my permalinking. So that's going to bring me to this blank page here. So now I've got a blank slate to be able to create what I'm looking for. What's the purpose of this dashboard? Because the nice thing about this is the ability to have multiple dashboards is you can have multiple purposes just with your login. So let's say hypothetically this is going to be a dashboard that I want something to be able to be on my display, something that I want my call center agents to be able to see and understand what's going on in my queues. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick my feature, which is my UCCX, and then I'm going to pick what kind of agent or what kind of widget it is I'm looking for. As you can see, we've got several different options. We've got some that are more real-time, some that are a combination of historical type information. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through. The idea behind this dashboard is, again, I want to be able to get something out to my employees. I want them to be able to see the status of my queues, see what my agents are doing. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a real-time CSQ activity widget. I'm going to pick my UCCX cluster. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'll call this CSQ sample. Um, and again, what we're going to see here is a little bit of the ease of use of Verify. Um, it's as simple as being able to say, hey, you know what? I want to be able to pick my queues. These are the queues that I want to be able to see statistics on. Very easy. If I just want one or two queues, I can add one or two queues. If I need to be able to remove queues, again, simplicity behind that to be able to just get your general metrics. The next thing we do is rather than trying to say we're going to shoehorn you a bunch of information, some of it you can rearrange, some of it you can't rearrange, some stats will be there, some stats don't, we say, hey, what do we want to build this widget for? Well, you know what, I need to be able to see you know, how many calls are waiting right now, um, what are the total number of calls, um, how many agents do I have logged in. So very easily, we're just picking general metrics. So we're going to see this breakdown on a per queue basis. I'm going to see the total number of calls, the number of calls waiting. Uh, maybe I want to see the oldest call in my queue right now in hours, minutes, seconds, or just in seconds. So right now, I'm getting a great picture of just how many calls my queues are taking, how many calls are currently waiting, what's the oldest call in the queue. Uh, maybe I also want to be able to see how many logged in agents I have. Um, but again, we make it very simple to be able to just pick your general metrics that you're looking for. Um, add those to a widget or a wallboard and save, and now we've got a very nice general widget that's going to give me all the information that I'm looking for in my queues. What are my busiest queues? How many agents do I have logged in? And things of that nature. So we really take that simplicity of being able to just pick and choose what fields are most important to you. But we can go ahead and continue to add from there. So this is a great widget right here. I'm looking at some queue information, but you know what? Maybe I need to have some alerts. If there's a certain number of calls, um, I need to be able to see, have this turn multiple colors or something of that nature. So Verify does offer thresholding. Um, again, simplicity behind that is very easy to set up. All I'm going to do is edit this widget, and I'm going to go ahead and add some thresholds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I have multiple queues in this, in this widget right here. Do I want them all to have the same threshold, or do I just want one to have one threshold and then a different queue to have a, dish, uh, a, a different threshold for the number of calls waiting? So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and pick on our cars queue over here. And I'm going to say, OK, what statistic do I want a threshold on? The nice thing about Verify is we are flexible. In other words, I've got four fields within my uh, widget here that I could set different thresholds on. So if I have a certain number of agents logged in, I want that to turn a certain color, I could set a threshold on that. Same thing with calls waiting. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and add just a very general calls waiting. So I want this guy to be green when I have zero calls in the queue. Easy enough. So maybe I want this guy to turn orange um, when I have uh, between one and two calls in the queue. I'm going to continue to compound onto this expression um, because basically what I'm doing is I'm building my filter to draw attention to. So anything over two calls, I want this guy to be red. I really want it to draw attention. So I want it to be greater than or equal to three. And now I've basically just set a very general threshold. You can see. So the nice thing about this, again, each one of these can draw attention to a certain problem. Rather than just highlighting the whole thing and saying, hey, there's a queue problem, I'm saying, hey, maybe I have a problem with calls waiting, or maybe I have a problem with the number of agents logged in. So we're very flexible, and we make it very easy to be able to pick and choose those stats that you're looking for. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is show a little bit of uh, the real-time agent activity. So the nice thing about this is with agent activity, it's always important to know what your agents are doing for multiple reasons. One, have they been on that phone call for 15 or 20 minutes, and maybe they need some assistance. Being able to have a real-time agent widget like this that's going to tell you the state that they're in and give you the reason, not just the reason code, 
um, is an important way to be able to see at a high level what's going on with your individual agents. We'll just give this guy a name. And then we basically we pick what fields and what statuses we want. So keeping this as a simple widget, something that may be displayed on the dashboard, I want to know, you know the current state with the reason. Again, nice thing about Verify is we're not just going to throw a code at you. We're not just going to say, hey, current state, you know, not ready, one, two, three, four. We're going to say, hey, current state, not ready for lunch. Current state, not ready for talking. So we're actually going to go ahead and be able to provide that reason that somebody is in that, that state. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to say, hey, you know what? I want to know how long they've been in this state. So that's very important from multiple perspectives. One, maybe I want to know how long somebody's been talking on the phone. And if my average call is about five minutes, being able to see and visually identify that an agent has a problem before they come to you is a great way to be able to get ahead of issues. Um, but also things like, you know, who's all on lunch? Do I have five people on lunch? How long have they been on lunch? If they've been on lunch for 50 minutes, well, it's probably okay for me to be able to take my lunch because we expect them to be back in five or 10 minutes able to include dialogues is going to be able to answer uh, be able to provide phone numbers and things of that nature um, as well as being able to see the previous state that somebody was in along with the reason and maybe the previous state duration so a lot of say you know well how is that important why do I know that need to know the previous state well you know if somebody just got back to lunch it's nice to know that because now I know who just kind of got back to lunch and things of that nature so basically what we're doing here is we're creating a, just a very general widget that's going to show us all of our agent information um, and show us most pertinent information Another nice thing about this widget is you have the ability to search. So widgets can be created based off of individual agents. And all we're going to do is we're going to go out to your agents and we'll pick which agents we want. Um, I can create this based off of individual resource groups and pick a resource group. Um, or I can create it off of teams and pick individual teams. So the nice thing about this also is the flexibility. Let's say, for example, I have my team here and this is part of my team. I'm an agent supervisor. Um, but you know what? I don't necessarily need to be in this widget. We do give you the ability to compound searches. So I can say, hey, I want this entire team, but you know what? Maybe I don't want this particular agent or I want to be able to remove myself from this particular widget. We give you the ability to go ahead and say, hey, I want it to meet this criteria, but I don't want Laura in this particular widget. Let's go ahead and save this. and Let's just take a look at what we built. So essentially what we built here is just a very general, simple widget. That's going to show all the information that I chose. It's going to show me anybody that's ready, not logged in, and things of that nature, not ready. But we can build on this. You know what? I don't need to see who's logged out, how long they've been logged out. That's not super important information. So the nice thing about that is we give you the flexibility to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to see every single state. I just want to see who's logged in. Uh, maybe I want to see who's not ready, who's ready, just people that are reserved, talking, or working. Now what we're doing is we're filtering that information to really only be able to show you the pertinent information. One of the things that I see a, a, a lot is the ability to create different widgets for different states. So the nice thing about that is that's flexible. So just looking at a general widget here, you know what, this is great. I've got my not ready folks. I've got my ready folks. But you know what, maybe I need a different uh, widget. Maybe I want to separate this a little bit. Maybe I want to have one widget that's going to represent everybody that's not ready along with the reason and why they're not ready but also just another one that shows me all the people that are ready and how long they've been ready. So the nice thing about that is we do make that extremely simple. All I have to do is copy a particular widget and then edit some general filters. So all I did was make a copy of this guy. I can edit it down here and say, hey, you know what? In this one, I only want to see the not ready folks. And now I've got a general widget that's going to just show me all the not ready folks. I can size that down to show any of the pertinent information or add or exclude columns. Um, then maybe I want another widget. Um, or maybe I want to just make a copy of this one and just have it be the ready folks. So it's very easy to just go ahead, click, edit, and now I just want to be able to see who are my ready agents. So we make it very flexible to be able to see that information and flow through the entire application to be able to say, hey, now I've got the big picture. This is how many calls. This is how many agents I have logged in. But not just that. These are what, this is what my agents are doing. So I can go ahead and delete this, and now I've got a great widget that's very easy to display on a dashboard or a wallboard. I can continue to compound onto this application. I can take these widgets and say, hey, you know what? This is a good one. I want to copy it over to a different dashboard. Let me go ahead and put that on my simple dashboard and move that guy over. 
So now I just moved it over to a different dashboard. If I scroll down towards the bottom, you're going to see I have that same widget down here. So we make it very easy. We make it very flexible to be able to pull back information, pertinent information, um, share information via permalink, as well as being able to resize and adjust these just to be able to meet your needs. One of the other nice things that I want to be able to mention here is that this is great. We'll walk through some general widgets. This is a very good example of just creating something that may be displayed on a big screen. But the nice thing about having multiple dashboards is it's not solely for that big screen. So if I'm a supervisor, I'm a manager, this is great information. This is what the type of information I want my employees to be able to see on a dashboard. I want them to be able to see how many calls are in the queue, how many calls are waiting, what's the average queue time, but also what's the abandoned average queue time. In other words, are people sitting in the queue longer than the average person is abandoning a call? Because that's going to draw a problem right there. But I can also create something that's a little bit more detailed for myself, something that I don't have to share, where if I want to be able to monitor my agents in a much more statistical manner, maybe I want to be able to monitor all my cues and just really focus in on service levels. Again, these are just different types of widgets, as simple as just adding over the information that's most important to me and saying, hey, you know what, I want to build a service level metric. So I can come in, I can type in service level, and I'm going to be able to bring back all your service levels. No limitation of, oh, if I have this service level, then I can't add this one, or if I have this one, then I can't remove that one. We don't put those limitations on, the, uh, on you guys. What we like to do is say, hey, let's build something that works for you. Let's give you the fields that are most important to you. So at this time, I want to thank everybody for, for, uh, for joining. Um, and please, if you have any questions, um, head up the moderators. We're going to be uh, doing some Q&A time now. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to you, Phil. Great, thanks, Vic. All right, so let's uh, get into some Q and A here. Uh, do we have any questions? We'll take about six minutes here to <laughs> get some of your questions answered. We can go over; it's no worries. But uh, kind of pass this over to Dan. Do we have anything in the Q A Q and A panel? Yeah, Phil, thanks. A lot of good questions today. So thanks uh, everyone for submitting your questions. Um, one very good question I want to kind of clarify a little bit. So there's uh, some interest in what the dialog field actually represents. Um, and so just so everyone's aware, this is a very, very useful field that tells us actually live what's going on with the call. So more of um, like the call feature invoked. Uh, if an agent is putting a caller on hold or trying to get consultation, maybe over from another supervisor or another agent, as they are going through that call feature, that field is updating and saying, hey, you're consulting with this person. If it's just a normal A to B call, you're just going to have the call details, inbound call from the caller ID. So that tells us a lot about what's going on with the specific call. So very, very handy field. We don't see that too much. It's uh, not really known, but the data is there and we're grabbing that. So just want to put that out there. Uh, another good question coming in from uh, Richard, licensing needed. Um, as far as the wall board goes, if you have already the CDR analytics, you are grandfathered into the CCX wall board piece. Um, we will need to recode a license now that we need to connect to your CCX cluster, but um, the wall board piece, if you are already a CDR customer, that comes grandfathered in. If you are not a CDR customer, there's just a flat annual fee. Uh, for the wallboard piece. Um, another question from Kelly, is there a limit on how many people can use permalinks? No, uh, there is no limit. We, we have unlimited permalinks. Uh, the only restriction of that is the number of simultaneous sessions or number of open permalink sessions. Obviously, that gauges the server uh, and requires more server uh, resource. So uh, we do or would want to keep an eye on that as well. Good. Uh, another question that came in, can I restrict user visibility into the wallboard content? Yes, of course. Uh, so with our um, feature, our public search set feature, uh, CTX does tack into that. And so you could say, hey, this user can only see this team's information or this user, maybe it's a supervisor, can only see this resource group's information or even agent by name as they log in. That's the only data that they're going to be able to see in their, their wallboard widget. Okay, so yeah, definitely uh, we could restrict user visibility on that. Uh, another question that came in. 
can I share dashboard uh, and allow other users to edit the dashboard? So uh, I think Vic talked about being able to share the dashboard's Verma permalink. That is going to be a read-only uh, component. We are currently working on for uh, uh, my shameless plug in the EFT2, which is basic dashboard sharing. So this is actually taking a copy of the dashboard and allocating it to another user. Um, second phase of that will be allowing them to edit. So, but for initial EFT2 release, it is uh, just making a mere copy of that dashboard, not allowing them to edit that dashboard yet, but is coming soon. Um, there's been uh, not so much a question, but comments uh, about visual representations of this data. Uh, so as of right now, it is just uh, table-based data updating live. Uh, we definitely are aware that, you know, there are other applications out there that give this data to you in graphical format. You might see a speedometer or a donut or pie chart. We are definitely gearing towards that. Uh, that is our next phase of this, but as of right now, just table-based data. But yeah, uh, for Neil, thank you for those questions. That's definitely coming down the road for the, the graphical pieces uh, of this data. Uh, another question from Kelly. If you refresh a lower interval, uh, example, every five minutes, could you share that dashboard out to a larger audience view permalink? Uh, so the way the permalink works is you'll have your parent dashboard, and then the permalink is basically just like a child. It's, it's mirroring the data, but it's actually its own database feed. So uh, if the dashboard was set up for every five minutes, uh, the timing of the parent and child would probably not align, right? So the, the child dashboard will have its own frequency uh, of every five minutes. So uh, you could certainly do every five minutes and have more sessions going. That's not a problem at all. So yeah, if you're trying to get more sessions, it is definitely a good idea to spread them out uh, with a little bit more gap. That way we could, you know, query, go through the thread process, and then get the next one going. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Kelly. Uh, as far as granular uh, refresh rates, yes. Uh, so it's 30 seconds on the historical stuff that we looked at. So that's CSQ details, CSQ summary. For the real-time stuff, uh, the CSQ real-time is five seconds. The, CS, uh, the agent real-time is actually live. We're not querying CCX for that information. CCX is pushing the data to us as it happens. Okay. Any other questions? A lot of good questions. Keep them coming, guys. Thank you very much. Any other questions from uh, the attendees? Going once. A uh, question just came in from Richard. What we saw today, is it only EFT1 or general 12.1? So what you saw today is in EFT. Uh, one, so that is readily available as beta, however. Uh, GA, we are anticipating uh, like the end of the second week of January, so let's say mid-January for the GA release of this. But yeah, what you have today is is in beta. If you are interested in beta, uh, you could email beta at Verify. I know I'm stealing uh, Phil's thunder here, but yeah, we, we, we've got a long beta list, a lot of activity on that list, but uh, if you want to get your hands on this, we can certainly set you up. Any other questions? And if you have a question, uh, you know, after the webinar, feel free to, to email either uh, Victor at verify.com, Dan at verify.com, or Phil at verify.com, and we'll get those questions answered. Any other questions? Right. Moment we've all been waiting for. Congratulations, Bethany Hudson. You have won the $50 Amazon gift card. We'll be reaching out directly after the webinar, Bethany. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We'll be sending you that $50 Amazon gift card. I want to thank everybody on the call. Uh, a reminder, we'll be sharing this recorded on-demand webinar 
at our verify.com slash company slash webinars webpage. If you have any interest in any other features, please um, start a free trial with us. And if you have any other questions, please e email myself, Dan or Victor directly. Again, thanks for joining us today. Um, we'll be having and hosting webinars pretty much each Wednesday throughout each month, um, switching topics, uh, you know, each month. So look, look and check back frequently to that webinars page to see what we're offering that particular month. Again, thank you and have a great day.